Okay, welcome. This is going to be an introductory video lecture to the theory of evolution by natural selection. We're going to begin by talking about a theory and then move on to the specific theory of evolution proposed by Darwin. So this is the definition of a theory. Um, a theory is an explanation in science that connects a whole bunch of different observations, tested hypotheses, you know, um, research that has been done, facts that have been collected, and they're used by scientists to, to make a prediction. In fact, that's where the real value of a theory comes. It's not so much in explaining, it, it not, doesn't just explain what's already been observed. It can be used to make predictions about new situations, so things not observed before. So if we take a look here at this picture of uh, these bacteria cells, for a long time scientists in biology didn't know how disease was created. And then they created the, and then the germ theory, so connected a whole bunch of research and basically um, explained how many diseases are created, that bacteria and viruses can um, create disease in the body. Before that, we didn't really know where diseases came from. And it allowed us to take tested hypotheses and make predictions about where new diseases came from. So that's the, the germ theory of disease, that, that, that bacteria and viruses can cause disease. Another um, theory that we have in biology is that these things are also living. These are the smallest living things. And uh, even though we couldn't see them at the time, um, we learned that uh, you can be alive and be one cell large. So as a result of that, we developed the cell theory. It's another major theory in biology. And today, what we're really going to talk about is evolution by natural selection, the theory proposed by Darwin about how evolution actually occurred. So a man named Charles Darwin is credited with developing our modern theory of evolution. Um, and it has changed over time because theories are adaptable. But the main points of what Darwin proposed hold true today and are still used by scientists to make predictions about things that are observed directly um, as well as things that are unobserved. And um, here we see a picture of Charles Darwin. We also see a picture of some of his finches that he was interested in doing his research on. Now, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution hinged on two main points. The first was that living things change over time and that they have a share common ancestor in the past. So here's a picture of his finches. He said all these finches came from one ancestral finch and that they became new species as a result of a process, as a result of his second major point that he developed which is that natural selection is the force that makes evolution occur. Now, Darwin wasn't the first to come up with the idea that living things change, but he was the first to come up with the idea that natural selection is a force that's capable of making that change happen. Now, we have a modern definition of evolution. The modern definition has changed as a result of genetic research, which Darwin didn't know about. but. Um, Today, we define evolution as a genetic change in a population of organisms over time. Darwin wasn't aware of genes. He wasn't aware of how things inherited their traits, um, but he knew that they changed over time. So we've added this definition as scientists have uncovered new information, and that's one of the keys of a theory. So here's the key points so, um, of, of what makes evolution evolution. How does it happen is, is what most people want to know, and it's the part that most people debate. And I've kind of summarized it into a equation, I guess I would say, that, that explains how evolution occurs. And I call it the evolution equation. This is not an official thing. It's just something I kind of made up. But there are sort of three components. And if these three things are present, then evolution will occur. If any of them is not present, evolution won't occur. So for evolution to happen, for genetic change in a population of organisms to, to occur, there has to be some kind of inheritable genetic variation. Okay, And we'll talk more about what that means. There has to be a selection process. And then time has to pass. And as long as these three things are present, evolution will happen. If any one of these three is not present, then evolution will not occur. So let's take them one at a time. Okay, first let's talk about the idea of inheritable genetic variation. 
Inheritable means that it can be passed on to your children. And genetic variation is differences in the genes of an organism. And this was the first key principle that's necessary for there to be evolution, genetic change in a population. So um, a group of organisms, a population of organisms, has to have variation for evolution to occur. There has to be some differences to select from. And that variation must be the result of differences in genetic code. So um, if an animal is injured and it loses an arm, I have a three-legged dog. That's not an inheritable genetic variation, even though the organism, my dog, is different from other dogs. So we see black dots and pink dots here. We could think of that as genetic variation. There's something to select from. Here's an example of a living thing with an inheritable genetic variation. These clams have differences in the color patterns of their shells. And that comes directly from the genetic code that these clams have, even though they're the same species. The second concept is the idea of selection. There has to be a process that makes a selection among those varieties. So anything in the environment of an organism, and we'll give you some examples in class, that can select certain varieties to reproduce and pass on their DNA is a force of selection. Darwin gave one possible scenario for that selection. He called it natural selection, in which the environment selects certain individuals. But it's not the only kind of selection. There's actually other kinds of selection. Um, so if we look at our example of our pink and black dots here, the, the lot of pink dots, one black dot. So there is variation, which was required. And then if selection occurs, and maybe the black dots are favored for whatever reason, and they get to reproduce more and pass on more DNA. Over time, the, the pink dots didn't totally go away because some of them would have passed on DNA, but the black dots were favored and selected for, so they passed on and had more children, and they become more common in the population. That's evolution. The last point of evolution equation is time. It takes many generations for genes to become more common in the population. Now time from an evolutionary standpoint is not just time passing. Time is not equal for all animals or for all plants or for all things that evolve, for all organisms that evolve. Time is different depending on how quickly your generations occur. So things like bacteria that can reproduce in a matter of hours, their generation time is fast, so the time that evolution takes is faster. Fruit flies, a subject um, of a lot of research in evolution, one generation for fruit flies from adult to larva to egg to larva to another adult that can reproduce is about two weeks. Elephants, on the other hand, take about 10 or 15 years for one generation to occur. So evolutionary time moves more slowly for elephants than it does for fruit flies or for bacteria. So here's a challenge question. If you were going to do research on evolution, which organism would you choose? And tell me why in terms of the evolution equation. Okay, so see if you can use the key components of the evolution equation, along with what I just discussed about the last component, and propose why you would it would be better to do evolutionary research on, um, on elephants as compared to doing evolutionary research on fruit flies. And this concludes our first video lecture. Thank you. A quick thank you to all of those who contributed uh, pictures to this presentation. They're all creatively commonly licensed and if you'd like to look at them again you can find them here.